This is a good spot if yeah. she's done. All right, so I'm talking to Barbara Boucher, homeowner of 16 Silo, part of the 2008 Showcase of Homes. And my first question for you is just to, for you to tell us a little about your personal story. Well, um, I uh, grew up in, uh, in Troy, South Troy. Um, I'd say pretty humble beginnings in Troy. I grew up in a low-income housing project. And uh, it was an interesting life with a lot of great challenges and adversity, and it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about taking care of myself and taking care of other people, and uh, I learned very quickly how to work and to earn money, and uh, I think it helped me develop a really great work ethic and helping other people. Um, I have uh, three brothers who two were uh, mentally retarded, and that taught me a lot, too, about people and uh, all kinds of people and how to be compassionate and, um, and work with people. And that kind of led me, uh, when I went to uh, put myself through college, and what interested me was to be able to help people and continue to do that, as well as learn about how to become you know, financially independent and how to build that and create your dreams and your potential, because I didn't come from that kind of surrounding. So for okay. me, it was always an interest of how could yeah. you do that. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, so speaking about, um, you know, Going from those humble beginnings, um, tell me a little bit about how that has inspired you with your home. Uh, well, you know, um, for me, when I uh, I didn't grow up in certain kinds of surroundings, so from a little kid when I started to uh, go around, I was in awe mm -hmm. of things. I was seeing beauty and uh, the way people mm -hmm. would put things together. So from a little kid, I would like take in whatever I would see, and uh, and you know, I was always like looking and watching and observing, and uh, okay. and then I started to travel. From traveling, I saw all different parts of the world, from Africa to Europe to Asia to, you know, Canada and Mexico, and, you know, and every culture has their own way of mm -hmm. taste and style and decor, and I just started to uh, uh, blend it all, and so I wanted to create a home um, where when people could come that not only would it feel comfortable and casual and uh, laid back, but also they get a sense of the world, because a lot of people may never travel outside the United mm -hmm. States, and I wanted them to have the experience of, you know, of all parts of the world, because I enjoy that. So I have things I've been collecting all mm -hmm. over my house from different parts. Okay. And, uh, so. All right, great. Um, so kind of switching gears a little bit, let's talk about um, what you do for a living. Um, you work for Barbara Boucher Asset Management, and um, with the current economic climate, Tell me a little bit about how that's affecting your clients on a local basis. Um, well, I think uh, one of my mottos is to try to communicate with my clients. Um, right from the very beginning, um, I set out to try to educate them about the stocks, bonds, the market, the risks, and things like that, so that when certain things go on, they have a working knowledge of it, and they're not so nervous. It's not just like they're trusting just what mm -hmm. I say. They actually have a foundation to draw upon. And so um, at a time like this, my clients, a lot of them have been with me many, many years, some of them okay. over 20 years. Okay. And so they're used to the climate, and basically what they know is, is that you know, it's kind of like, uh, like growing a garden. You know, if you plant seeds and you grow vegetables, of course, we love it when it's sunny, and we mm -hmm. want sunny days to be all the time. Okay. But in order to have a beautiful, healthy garden, you need some rainy days. Okay. And the rain helps make the vegetables. Well, so too does investing. Okay. Investing is... Um, you know, you need to weather the storm and uh, buy good quality things and diversify. And, okay. You know, and it kind of takes care of itself. All right. So speaking of that, tell me a little bit about what would be a recommendation you'd give. What's what's something um, uh, your recommendation for consumers on smart financial planning right now? I think smart would be not to be um, nervous and do anything too rash and too quick, and to evaluate one's portfolio and hopefully. Um, smart would be that you diversified and allocated your portfolio appropriately mm -hmm. in the beginning for short term and long term and what that would mean is, is to be smart and stay the course with probably what your program was unless of course 
there's certain things that you invested in that um, uh, require media attention and you need to take a look at whether or not you would want to um, you know perhaps buy or sell something it's also a wonderful buying opportunity out there right okay now. so smart would be to buy good quality okay. that you think that would um, is undervalued and uh, know that the market comes back and okay. so it's great for that all right and uh, where do you think most consumers go wrong when it's an economy such as it is now um, they panic and they sell okay and then um, you know for example a couple days ago the Dow had dropped 700 points or so mm -hmm. the very next morning it was up several hundred points yeah. in literally 12 hours yeah. so you know so the, 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 the thing to do is to be you know to, to consult good advisors and to evaluate very carefully and uh, and not do anything too rash okay great and um, just give me a quick comment on the bailout proceedings. Yeah, that one's a loaded question. The <laughs> well, there's different philosophies that you could state with that. Um, my first thought is, where are they getting the money from? Okay. You know, so although it's lovely to bail out, you can't just print money. And uh, sometimes I think that um, there may not be anything underneath what it is that we're doing. Right. Um, at the same token, I think that we need to do something to stabilize the economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, though, um, I think that if we all were not rash and calm and didn't have headline news saying a thousand banks went down the tubes and things yeah. like that, I think what we do is we self-create the panic and we self-create what's going on. Okay. And the bailout is kind of like treating an effect. Okay. In a way, we kind of self-create it. So. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Okay.